So good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you have seen regularly on Saturday at 11 o'clock, uh, we have keep coming with different, different subjects. And uh, today's subject is Central Electricity Authority's Regulation 2023, measures relating to safety and electric supply. Uh, today, 24th June, 2020 at 11 a.m., we are conducting the first series of CA Regulation 2023. If we have seen tremendous response uh, for this uh, webinar, we have over 1,500 plus participants for this program. So we are contemplating to have three or four more series on the same subject. As you all know, we can't do definitely one, one and a half hours. We can't justify talking about these regulations. So with the respective uh, by, you know, delegates today, we may have rolled out a few more uh, regu you know, series on the subject. So this is hosted by National Federation of Engineers for Electrical Safety, NFE, which is just four months old. And uh, we have touched upon more, you know, maybe uh, seven to 10,000 uh, people across the country. Uh, through physical uh, webinar, then uh, physical seminar, webinars. And we, I'm also very proud to say we have over 500 members, very active members. We also have a very active WhatsApp group uh, clarifying and addressing various issues. And so we did uh, our conferences uh, across the country talking about uh, National Electrical Code uh, 2023. Uh, we finished five major cities. So we have upcoming event in Cochin, Mumbai. We have a network meeting, uh, Pune, Kolkata, Gurugram, and Coimbatore. So those who don't know what is NFE, the, uh, you know we have uh, vision and mission put both here, and you can always log into our website nfees.org. However, our president who is here as a, a presenter will be talking a bit more on the um nfe and also this is our website nfes.org become a member and we are also coming out with uh, another uh, webinar on uh, uh first july that's about earth and unearth systems so we already have 500 plus registration those who wish to join uh lakshmi my colleague will be putting it on the chat box so you can take it and we have uh, 15 July, we are coming with a second series of lightning protection on structures. Okay, my name is Dominic. Uh, I keep posting here uh, from the fire industry involved now with electrical standards and code. And today we have a very distinguished uh, guest. I will not read out the entire profile. Everybody is quite familiar with Mr. Gopakumar, the president of NFE. We have our uh, uh, general secretary, who is expected to join any moment, Mr. Pabu, who is also the retired electrical inspectorate from Tamil Nadu. So we have Mr. James Kutti Thomas. Uh, uh, is also a retired electrical inspectorate uh, from Kerala. So he he's joined us as a panelist, and he will be taking up certain questions from you. So we have um, uh, Shashiraj Kebi uh, from Bangalore. Retired additional chief electrical inspectorate is also with us. We are blessed to have him today. I think uh, we'll have very good interaction with him. So we have Eamon Sali, the founder, a member of uh, NFE, and also uh, retired PWD inspector wing. And uh, he's been quite active uh, with the uh, Maharashtra government. So very knowledgeable person. We'll let's see how we can come together and participate. So without much delay, we have a fantastic participant now. It's 11.05. I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Gopakumar to take over from here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dominic. Uh, so today, uh, you know, it's a very important day. So far, our programs, we were discussing some technical subjects. Today is the Actually, the second time we are talking about uh, regulation, uh, one year back, we had a panel discussion where uh, uh, the same panelists uh, were there, except Shashiraj sir. Uh, so today, uh, after the, the, the discussion is, uh, you know, it was before the regulation or 
we conducted it just after the draft publication so now this time it's after the regular uh, uh, regulation i will just show a small presentation i hope my screen is visible yes yeah so uh, uh, you know a lot of people normally pe people ask uh, this question what is the regulatory framework so this uh, slide this was actually we got it from uh, uh, the uh, one of the ca person during our program in bombay he was presenting this so then we took this idea and made this slide on the regulatory uh, uh, framework if we look uh, the at the top of the regulation we have the act which is the electricity act uh, based on which uh, the regulations are made so the regulations talk uh, about the safety especially the ca safety regulation which we call the full name of the regulation is measures relating to safety and electric supply 2023 so earlier there was uh, ie rule 1956 which was repel, repealed uh, during 2010 with uh, cea safety regulations or measures relating to safety and electric supply regulations 2010 which was some informations were added during 2015 2018 and 2019 now in 2023 regulation uh, the uh, 2010 version and all the other informations are merged together so because of this merger the regulation numbers had uh, changed which is also going to have some kind of issues uh, uh, with respect to people those who are following the old regulation number sometime you know that you have to change to the new regulation number uh, for the same subject now uh, june 8th uh, ca has uh, gazetted the measures relating to safety and electric supply regulations 2023 and these regulations uh, explains how to follow the requirements of the uh, electricity act uh, now we will go through the questions so there are some questions which we prepared for that uh, when i when we ask the question we will also share the uh, the, the regulation on the screen so that uh, it is easy for the viewers to understand uh, regarding your question sir that regulatory framework uh, actually uh, the hierarchy you have already explained it has been widely circulated among our members anyhow for the new viewers i can say that uh, 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 ultimately the constitutional uh, entitlement to that citizen that is article 21 empowers as uh, the citizen has a right to live under article 21 this is strengthened by the uh, uh, directive principle of the state uh, through article 41 and 42 based on which only several act and regulations are coming into picture uh, in that uh, in that era Okay, the Electricity Act uh, 2003 is insisting safety to the people under regulation. The CEA has been formed accordingly. So CEA is empowered under Regulation 53 to coordinate with the state governments in framing regulation for the in, for enforcing safety to the general public at large. Accordingly, the regulations have been prescribed. Uh, Uh, previously it was the electricity rules 1937 and 1956 now now that uh, 2010 uh, see regulation 2010 has replaced all those things now we have come up with the new regulation 2023 that is measures relating to uh, safety in electrical safety so with this new introduction we have uh, covered most of the Uh, ambiguities and vague uh, ideas which were prevailing the S2 standards and uh, regulations. Now that uh, uh, there could be some uh, some scope of interpretation against us, that I hope in this session we can resolve those issues, or we can address something uh, that can be done to the society at large and the implementers at large. Thank you, Mr. Gopal. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you very much sir thank you very much uh, so uh, uh, as the panelist uh, my first question uh, is to mr uh, amritlal uh, mr amritlal I, on the screen i am showing the regulation yeah. i am sure you you and all of us yeah. already must have read uh, most of the regulations now one of the confusing subject all over india was uh, earthing and definition sometimes were not good and now in the regulations for example you can see bonding conductor 
there is a, a new definition and uh, for example earthing there is a new uh, new regulation earthing means connection of exposed conductive parts and extraneous conductive part to the earthing terminal uh, so all these uh, has come what is your opinion about these uh, new uh, definitions uh, yeah good morning to all uh, the definition is good the only problem is what i find is in uh, regulation the term Uh, like uh, duplicate connection, uh, distinct and duplicate connection is required. Like that, it is getting repeated everywhere. Now the problem, what usually uh, the installers will have, whether it is talking about uh, separate uh, uh, new, I mean, earth bus bar or equipotential bonding. So that type of confusion is there. Throughout the regulation, so I would like. Uh, I mean, if there is anybody from regulatory body, they can explain it. What they actually mean by that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So basically, uh, there are some advantage, and uh, in in between, there is some. Uh, you know, still the confusion is. Gopal Kumar, can I can I can I just uh, put? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. Yeah. Please. See when they say the two distinct connection, it should not be taken as two different uh, terminals. It should be taken as two different paths through which the uh, earth connection shall be given. So if one of the uh, earth wire breaks, one of the protein conductor breaks, at least it should have another path to reach to the earth. So in that way, it should be interpreted. Yeah, I, actually, it is talking about two connections. Now the requirement of two connections, connections which is started. Two different protective yes. conductors which are taking you to the uh, earth a terminal earth yeah. electrode uh, actually sir th this has got uh, some technical uh, background as well for example uh, once when these two connections were introduced during uh, maybe 1950s there was no ip ingress protection was not existing and most of the equipment the earth connections were on the outer casing of the equipment let's say for example a motor Mm -hmm. but later once when the ingress protection was in, introduced in the standards uh, the earth terminals were uh, people started keeping it inside a protected you know mechanically protected place which is either mm -hmm. inside the panel board or something like that but uh, this practice is not uh, popular in india we still have panel boards where the earth terminals are or the earth bus bar is extended outside so mm -hmm. if the connections are from outside of course mechanically it can get corroded or somebody disconnecting and those chances are there so two connections are required now there is another technical uh, reason for example in the if you look at is 732 uh, i think class 5.1.6 or so it is uh, it is there is a requirement of uh, limiting the leakage current in an electrical equipment appliance the maximum leakage current in a fixed uh, installation of uh, more than a current using equipment more than 32 amps the maximum allowed leakage current is 10 milliampere if the leakage current is more than 10 milliampere we are supposed to make a reinforced protective measure and one of the reinforced protective measure is to have two connections so basically technically these two connections are required you, you can even see it in the is732 you just uh, search reinforced protective measure then you will be able to get it so basically this is uh, a requirement so i hope uh, mr amrit this is clear Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, my, uh, sir, yeah. sir, uh, sir, Mr. Gopal, sir. Yes, please. Hello. Ah, uh, I think uh, Amrit Ali is not convinced on this, <laughs> so I can uh, supplement some more thing. Uh, in the okay. near session, uh, most of the things have been resolved. They say what they say under the heading of everything up to not exceeding 60 volt, etc. What they mean is two separate and distinct connections with the earthing system. Uh, previously, people misconstrued that it is, should be there should be some uh, air cell road in the switchboard at one end and another air cell road at the left and something going on. So now that uh, it is clearly different as earthing system, uh, we can what we can infer is it is only a redundancy. We do not give much of weightage to the two separate and distinct configuration because it has been uh, giving a new look in the new regulation. That's what I think. 
so i just put that uh, part uh, the, in the in the chat box you can see the definition of earthing arrangement or earthing system so you have to have two connections to the earthing arrangement or earthing system means all the yes. electric connections and devices involved in the earthing of a system and installation or equipment so these two connections are actually to that part hope it's uh, it's clear now thank you thank you mr amrakula yes. now let me go to the next yes. question very important question uh, sali ji uh, we were uh, working together in the uh, bis in the nec and uh, during covid also we were restlessly working and uh, you know we had uh, uh, our committee meeting in addition we were meeting and uh, uh, discussing several points and one of the important point which we were always discussing was regulation number uh, the earlier regulation number 12 sub regulation 2 which says uh, the nec may be followed and now in the new regulation the system is much more clear so what is your opinion on this yeah so this is uh, actually result of our persistent efforts we have been taken uh, for this change in a small word because shall be and maybe makes a lot of difference maybe gives option of the person who refers the regulation to whether to use it or not and uh, shall be it makes it mandatory so whatever is have been given in the regulations it now says that the standards and codes are now mandatory see the actually uh, like you see when the bare law is there it doesn't give you all the interpretations on that bare law lot of books come out and they give the detailing like that this is the bare regulation and on that if you want to, to uh, really interpret it and go into specific uh, system of working of material then you must refer the standards and codes now this has become mandatory and if you don't follow that so that will be uh, actually in contradiction or a breach of regulation that is punishable as we know so this is a very good change that has come out and the implementation in accordance with that through the regulatory regulators inspectorate wings is now becomes a very very important part so in accordance if we see the Uh, our forms one, two, and three. I think they still are not totally in line with the standard formats which are given in the. Uh, if you can consider the <coughs> PPQQ RRSS forms which are given in the IS seven thirty two, so they slightly differ. So in accordance, I think we expect few changes in the formats given by form one, two, three, four also. uh see there is one option in the regulations which allows the government state governments to make some deviations but in respect of this regulation number 32 or 45 now so in uh, respect of regulation 32 it has been mentioned that we cannot make any deviation in the regulation 32 so, so in accordance the form 1 2 3 4 being part of that regulation 32 we cannot make any change so there are few limitations in accordance we should consider how to come out of that because as per my knowledge and as per my experience i can tell you the same forms cannot be applied to all type of installations there are some particular type of installations like high rise buildings we need to consider those from different angle for hospital buildings we need to consider from different angles and in accordance there should be some changes in the formats so yeah. i think still we await to uh, make few change in the format or at least allow the local governments to make the respect to yes 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 thank you thank you sir thank you sir but yeah. one one sub question now you hmm. see in the regulation number 2 nec and nbc are made mandatory yes. and the if uh, where relevant indian standards are not available international standards shall be followed and yes. if we look at the definition of international standard so here uh, for example the international standard Oh, where is it? So I understand actually your point. It should be specific to IEC only. So yes, yes. Yeah, standard. You see this one. The standard. Standard means uh, Indian standard, and in the absence of Indian standard, International Electrotechnical Commission standard hmm. institute of uh, now the regulation is allowing as a sequence. First is IEC yes. standard, then IEC standard, then IEEE. then european norm standard actually i don't know what this european norm standard <laughs> yes yes <laughs> so so all these are allowed but uh, do you think that uh, uh, in europe somebody will allow uh, 
uh, at the last of the sequence uh, if nothing is available follow indian standard will they allow an european nation will allow indian standard uh, to follow i don't think so. i don't think so no <laughs> in we are allowing our electrical installations to follow european norms if yes. there is no indian standard now what will happen is manufacturers and the people with uh, business interest they will try to interpret the wordings of the standard and they will they yes. can they will claim for example this subject is explained only in the european <laughs> standard it is not in the indian standard iec standard and the ieee standard then they will try to claim that you have to follow european standard yes yes so yes. this is going to be a challenge now the question is Uh, first of all we should understand that uh, almost all 100 percentage subjects uh, is or 90 percentage is standards are there 100 percentage subjects iec standards are available but uh, we can interpret that uh, a typical particular subject is not there in both the standard so european norms can be followed my question is will an european nation allow an indian standard to be followed in that nation let's say britain i don't think so <laughs> i don't think they will allow what is your opinion say on this allowing the the european uh, standard see i think we should have limited our scope up to iec standards only so yes we should not be inclusion of ieee and all the standard because that may create a lot of confusion and there may be some controversies also somebody may ask to follow that will refer the standard at least they should have given a sequence also if not in this then this then this then this uh, th that much clarity if they can provide yeah. that, i think that will reduce yeah so thank you thanks for the answer now uh, our question uh, is uh, regarding the chartered electrical safety engineer to sri james kutty sir uh, james kutty sir the question is uh, this uh, the chartered electrical safety engineer earlier it was section 5a and now it is section 6 or, or regulation number 6 so all of us know that 2015 it has come out but only few states are trying to make the cesp uh, any reasons uh, can you tell why uh, the state governments are little bit reluctant in uh, implementing this regulation or making cesps available for people to make self -certi self certification a uh, good morning everybody actually i surprised why the individual governments are not implementing this it can be noticed that many states have conducted examinations for uh, appointing a chartered electrical safety engineer but still not sure whether uh, they appointed them also many states released notifications based upon the ca guidelines uh, for cesc why the states and the central government not appointing cesc to handle the appropriate installations below the notified voltage as per regulations uh, 34 and 45 i understand that uh, many states are there pending to declare even the notified voltage another fact i understand that uh, many of the inspectors in service are reluctant to implement this fearing they get lost their opportunities to inspect remember you have no right to inspect any of the installations below notified voltage without the consent of the consumer so for a safe installation please appoint cesc otherwise actually you are violating the regulation itself by which you may get penalized that's okay, about okay. this question uh, goma thank you but uh, there is a sub question as well see for example if you look at the formats uh, to be filled uh, in the schedule 2 there are the formats uh, you know form 1 form 2 form 1 okay. uh, and 2 applicable for voltages up to 650 volt uh, let's say mm -hmm. our main topic is low voltage so up to okay, 250 okay. volt form 1 and 2 is it sufficient to ensure safety in a consumer premise let's say a larger uh, consumer premise such as a hospital filling this form and making this test is it sufficient actually sari sir already explained about this uh, 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 about the forms 1 2 and 3 uh, as per uh, this regulation we have to follow or we have to inspect as per nec 2023 is 732 uh, 3043 etc but uh, that forms 1 and 2 of schedule 2 have limited entries 
For example, know where the type of earthing configuration, loop impedance, etc., are mentioned in these forms, which are having vital role with the safety of the insulation. So these forms are inadequate of, uh, in many respects. Okay, thank you. Also, if we look at the list of the tools, actually, for some more information were there in the draft, which was, I think, removed. Also, the list of tools and the list of meters to be used by the Chartered Electrical Safety Engineer, that also uh, is inadequate. Now, anyway, it's our continuous improvement. We have to work further to improve it. Thanks yeah, for well, the answer. Uh, now, I, yes, I just please, want Sally. to add a few words on this. See, regarding these forms, actually, I had given suggestion to add the name of Chartered Electric Safety Engineer below that checklist. But now, if you see, just the consumer has to sign that uh, checklist. So, consumer is not a technical person who can fill the form and sign that. So, there has to be compulsory sign of Chartered Electric Safety Engineer below that uh, form. So, that is missing, if you see. Yes, uh, I am I'm trying to show that uh, in the screen. So this is uh, the form two, which is included. So you mean to say at the end of end, the uh, at end of this this thing, all these things are technical, but how a common man can sign this? Supplier owner, how owner can sign this technical information? Okay, so ideally it should have been the chartered electrical safety. Ah, only there should be signature. a counter sign of there should be a counter sign of the owner. And sign should be of the Chartered Lake Safety Engineer. So this suggestion we already have given. I had given this suggestion to CA, but I think that now it's not seen to be considered. And but if you uh, see here, even the even there is no uh, point of uh, earth fault loop impedance in form one. There it is mentioned in form two, and there is only question whether it is tested or not. So does it make it safe? <laughs> Anyone can say, yeah, it is tested. But what was the result? Yeah. Was it satisfactory or not? That doesn't answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, this, this, uh, the ideally, uh, the somewhere if they could have made uh, a note saying that the forms in uh, IS seven three two can be added for larger installations, then only the requirement uh, as per uh, for a for a larger no, installation it, it, can tested be tested and found satisfactory. This, this two words also they can add. Was it tested yeah. and satisfactory? So yeah, but now you see, for example, this one where I am highlighting where the consumer's earth electrode is properly executed and has been tested. If yes, give value of earth resistance. Yes. Now, for example, this one this is applicable only in case of a low voltage consumer premise. Yes. Imagine the the supply voltage is a high voltage and uh, it is converted to with a transformer. Uh, the LV is used within the consumer premise. People mm -hmm. may try to misinterpret it. They will still ask, where is the earth electrode resistance value? Mm -hmm. This is actually to, to, to substantiate the regulation 18. Now, coming mm -hmm. back to the regulation 18 and 19, I have a question to oppose, sir. Let me first show the regulations. Uh, earlier, it was 14, 15, 16. Now, it is uh, 14, sorry, 16, 17, 18, the, the, the DISCOM. The responsibility of the DISCOM. 16. Switch gear on consumer premise, identification of earth the neutral and earth the earth the and earth the neutral conductor and the earth the terminal on consumer premise. Now, apart are uh, a serious question. Do you know any DISCOM in India who follows this regulation? Uh, very vital question. Uh, sir, uh, we have too many actions, not only ultra questions, as well as property laws in the guise of uh, uh, fire, as well as equipment laws. Whenever there is a, a over voltage reflected from the supplier's network, that is discount network. Uh, actually, this regulation, especially the present regulation 18, uh, 16, 17, 18, 16, we will take it up later to say, switch gear at the consumer premises. 17, uh, relates to the earth the terminal and 18 is the uh, specific regulation that I will deal with now. Uh, it has been uh, refined now. Actually, this regulation is our mostly century old regulation. It existed in 1937 before the court and standards were in existence. Uh, subsequently, it was uh, reflected in 1956 and in, uh, in the regulation 2000. 
2010 as well as the present regulation 2023 it it has attempted to modify according to regulation 18 they have introduced the wording under sub regulation 1 as per relevant standards that's a welcoming trend and uh, and the provisions also they have introduced some specific uh, uh, classes that is the last class and the same shall be interlinked with the earth terminal mentioned in sub regulation 1 through a suitable link this is what we call the the supplier's responsibility of providing a, uh, a link that is earth neutral link at the consumer premises uh, apart from that uh, for, especially for the 250 for the consumers uh, whose voltage doesn't exceed 250 volts uh, for the uh, for, for the consumers with higher voltage they have to use their own nursing system the two should be interconnected this all tends to what this all is tending towards a common uh, uh, common wording that is met uh, that met is to be followed then the, the air city terminal should be provided by the supplier this is the norm but unfortunately when the consumer tries to connect his getting terminal with the supplier setting terminal all the problems will occur the temporary over voltage this temporary over voltage uh, shall definitely occur because the supplier themselves are adopting various measures throughout this country i can see within the same distribution circle of the same discom they adopt a tt system they adopt a tnc and tnc plus tt so something is confusing they don't know the construction people don't know what is the responsibility of the discom it is a responsibility of the discom as per regulation 432 just we can refer that 432 also the slide for the uh, people for the uh, audience that is regulation 432 says neutral conductor shall also be erected at one or more points along with the distribution system or service line in addition to any connection with the earth which shall be at the consumer's premises this is totally absent uh, they also say that it should be as per standard what standard say as per is 732 class 4.5.2.2.3 it actually fix the responsibility the responsibility is with the supplier actually these things are not known to the supplier as well as the consumer because the options are totally abiding by the standards regulations for the past over 100 years i can say that has uh, misled the consumers what consumers can do they just want to have their equipment safeguarded have their life safeguarded they they fear i can say that none of the customer at least 90% of the consumers are reluctant they can't connect that extra terminal with the supplies there uh, the terminal because they don't know what is the arrangement of the supplies network whether they have interconnection the substation whether they have provided tme whether they have provided multiple neutral uh, earthing of neutral conductor these are totally alien to the consumer that's why the standard provide the responsibility with the supplier though we have to make aware of the supplier also in order to avoid any yes. hazard at the consumer yeah. premise so sir yes, to sir. simply to conclude uh, none of the uh, most or not none we really sometimes don't know um, majority of the cases uh, the earth terminal or the regulation 15 uh, sorry for 16 17 18 of the current regulations especially the earth terminal which is there in regulation 18 which was earlier the regulation number uh, 16 it was not provided by the electricity supplier in most of the cases actually i was in kerala last week so there uh, mm. uh, the 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 electricity supply company is giving a funny network it looks like a tt but on the on the distribution the neutral conductor is earthed whereas the earth terminal is uh, not available in the consumer premise because it it looks like a tt at the consumer premise and at the distribution it looks like a tncs with a pme actually we need to have a, something we have to do a research and we have to put some new names for this kind of non standard and uh, you know uh, 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 systems 
uh, i would say most of the the lot of accidents in consumer premises are due to is non standard methods of uh, uh, supply by the discom uh, anyway i don't know how we can take it up and protect the interest of the consumers now coming back to the questions again uh, i have a small question about uh, regulation 37 which is talking about the the uh, supply and use of electricity uh, my question is to shashiraj sir the question yeah. is uh, uh, at the point of uh, commencement of supply this uh, the table second one 11 kv and above a circuit breaker by consumer so yes. basically if we read this regulation uh, it says uh, every consumer of 11 kv and above they should have a, a circuit breaker means uh, maybe an air uh, pcb but earlier uh, switches were also allowed sir what is your say on this your opinion on this well definitely i think uh, it is going to add up to the costing factor Uh, because uh, 11 kv we have very small installations uh, which is commercial nature and uh, they would uh, like to go go into this uh, hd connections and obviously it is 11 kv connections and it would definitely add up to the costing but uh, i don't know now like um, the how they have gone into this in what angle they have looked these factors into well uh, accommodating a circuit breaker by all 11 kv consumers earlier as you rightly said uh, there was uh, a uh, distinction between voltage class and the connected load and uh, load also was a criteria before fixing the requirement of a breaker but they have done away with that and uh, uh, your rather uh, doubt also or a question was whether it is applicable to discoms well uh, the regulation 37 has to be read uh, entirely from uh, 37 1 to 8 and then only it is applicable to most of the installation whereas uh, very clearly 37 2 which uh, very clearly states that it is at the point of commencement of supply and it also says that it is to be provided by consumer obviously it goes without telling that it is applicable only to consumers and regardless of uh, whatever uh, voltage i mean based on voltage only the requirement of uh, primary protection is to be provided uh, obviously this uh, 372 does not apply to discoms uh, but it does apply to discoms when you come to 373 where it speaks of only a transformer whether i mean we have to read it very carefully the transformer means a transformer provided by a consumer as well as by discom by default it also goes uh, without telling that uh, the discom stations are also included in 373 and uh, uh, here there is a specific uh, requirement on 3732 where uh, for a supplier's installation the secondary protection up to 1000 kv it is exempted with a breaker and uh, only beyond 1000 uh, it is required but uh, we hardly have uh, any distribution transformers in excess of 1000 uh, kv at least in our state so it hardly matters for them but then uh, since we we have had interactions with uh, escoms the escom transformers uh, being in the in public place there is the breakers provided are for that matter the mccb is provided on the secondary side also are ter- terribly vulnerable for uh, theft so they say that uh, a fuse is uh, something even a fuse also is many a times in rural sectors is taken away and there is theft on that end also so to that extent they say that uh, you would want to protect but with the fuse so that is the understanding which has happened in karnataka state and uh, even uh, with respect to the primary um, gos which was already existing probably about 15 years back all the primary gos have, were initially they were uh, sealed because they thought that 11 kv there there was a theft at the 11 kv end at the uh, point of commencement of before the point of commencement of supply so later on by around 2000 they 
have done away with the GOS also on the primary side. So now that it is this 3702 specifically talks about consumers. So it is universal that uh, as far as uh, discounts are concerned, the point of commencement of supply does not apply at all. The primary control does not apply. But uh, yeah. when we come to 37.3, it does apply and discounts, uh, all stations of discounts are required to have uh, protection on the uh, primary side for uh, transformers above 1000 and uh, above. But uh, obviously the discounts are all uh, uh, half stations and uh, only probably around 2005 in the state of Karnataka, we were not inspecting the stations of the discounts before uh, provision of the drawings. But now we have made it mandatory for all 66 kV or 33 kV and uh, uh, the, of course, the KPTCL uh, transmission companies with 110 and 220 at 400 to approve the drawings by the electrical inspectorate similar to the consumer gets his uh, HT installation approved by us. They have to also get it approved, provide the breaker. Sir, sir I, would, I would like to interrupt. I would like to interrupt. I would like to interrupt yeah, and please. ask one question. Now, the heading of yeah. the question is supply and use of electricity. Yes. So, probably this part is applicable only to the consumer premise where a discom is supplying and the consumer is using the electricity. Will it be like that? No. See, that's precisely what I was trying to tell. 37 speaks generally of all the installations when it comes to supply by the supplier to a consumer. And 37.2 specifically speaks of the, the consumer protection because it is at the point of commencement of supply. And that definition point of commencement of supply applies to only consumer. Yes. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. 37.2 refers exclusively for the consumer but the 37.3 does apply for the discounts as well discounts because as well. every transformer they are required to provide which was not provided earlier because most of the uh, stations were without the breakers and there was a lot of accidents and the this one uh, station interruptions were also there so now we have made it very clear and very sure for them that they have to get the drawings approved and we will issue an approval for before charging and that is recorded similar to yeah. the end consumer as well thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir also you told that uh, during uh, uh, also you told that uh, the 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 discoms are telling that uh, if they put the circuit breaker uh, it is stolen so the circuit yes. breakers and even fuses are stolen but then yeah. we have to ask a question back to them how many of your engineers are properly closing the distribution board which is on the roadside they open it for a repair or a connection and they never uh, Try to keep it in a closed and in a secured position. They keep it open, and if they if they keep their property open, of course uh, people will steal it. So you can they cannot escape with this uh, statement saying that uh, this is according. This is my my yeah, interpretation. Then, yeah, I hope yeah, you when agree. In Karnataka, the KERC came in uh, in the year 1999 2000. They came with a bank. And to tell you, I was interacting with KERC and they said, if the numbers of electrical accidents does not reduce, they are going to be severely punishable, the ESCOMs. But then it never got implemented and it was only on paper. And they also made the electrical inspectorate to go around the city of Bangalore and elsewhere. Most of the cities, the, the uh, mere mention of your boards and uh, even the street uh, switchboards being open, they wanted it to be cleared and we made a drive and then we intimated all these all such uh, locations to the, the supplier. You know, supplier got, has got, I think, uh, one into thousand times the staff got electrical inspectorate I got and they have a specific o which is uh, meant only for this purpose and they are supposed to do it and they don't do it. That is, suppose uh, the order of the day, and uh, they have the strong arm tactics because uh, they are in, uh, in, uh, in close contact with the uh, this yeah, one yeah. government. Thank and you. Day in and out. You. Although the earlier Act 1910 had defined that the electrical inspector is the advisor to government, it is never uh, been the fact in at least in Karnataka. The advice was now never taken from the electrical inspector. It was the other yes. way around. Thank you, sir. Thank it you, sir. Thanks for the detailed. 
Thanks for the detailed answer, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Now I have uh, I have to go to the next. Uh, Gopakumar, just just a minute, Gopakumar. I think yeah, we should please. read this regulation with regulation number sixteen, where supplies required to put their own uh, circuit breaker at the point of supply. So this uh, regulation doesn't give any exemption from that regulation number sixteen. That is irrespective of the voltage level. You can just check the regulation number sixteen. Regulation number point. sixteen. Yeah. In belonging to the supplier, right? Yeah, switch gear on consumer premise. The yes. supplier shall provide a suitable switch gear in each conductor, every service line. Yes. Yes, it is there. So it is not exempted. So supplier has to provide his own switch gear as well as consumer shall also provide his own own switch gear. So will it be yes. doubled? One, but sir, one in sixteen, point. it is it is belonging to the supplier, and in yes. the twenty is by the consumer. Yeah, sir. Uh, the interpretation can be the supplier has to provide uh, a switch gear. In addition, the consumer also have to put one yes, more switch yes. gear. So, so then it one becomes before, uh, double. Before point of supply and one one at the point of yeah. supply. So that is a distinction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So I would like to ask uh, one of the financial implication for smaller consumers. Let us say, look at the regulation number thirty-seven. Every consumer should provide. Uh, 11 kV and above, they have to provide a, a, a switch gear, which is shown in the sub-regulation number two. A question to Mr. Amritlal. Uh, Mr. Amritlal, imagine yeah, yeah. MSMEs of, uh, let's say, smaller transformer, 150 kV, 200 kV, uh, making a 11 kV circuit breaker uh, to their uh, installation. What is your opinion on that? This will be is it yeah, will be, an, yeah, will be yeah. an expensive job? Yeah, it is an expensive job. One more thing I have to add: the point of commencement. Is not defined anywhere, so that is going to create another problem between thirty-seven two and three. And yes, coming back to your question, uh, this uh, VCB indoor type VCB costs around five lakhs, whereas AB switch with the uh, HRC fuse costs around one point five lakh. And if you suppose if you are putting up the breaker on pole that is outdoor type, even then the cost difference is very big, like. Uh, VCB with uh, will cost outdoor type will cost around something like two point two five lakhs, whereas a simple AB switch with the proper fuse will cost only some thirty thirty five thirty five thousand rupees. So uh, there is a definite issue in thirty seven two three uh, with regard to MSMEs and small entrepreneurs. So oh, thank you. Thank you. Why, why I pointed out thirty seven two and three? The reason is whether we have to have a separate uh, uh, switch gear for the transformer, and at the point of commencement, you need to have another VCB. So I think there is a lack of clarity on that aspect. Yeah, uh, I think there are some discoms. Those who say that. Uh, You know, if I example, I am saying uh, I am applying for an, a connection, and the discom says, "Sorry, we don't have a circuit breaker. You provide a, you buy and uh, install a circuit breaker, but it uh, comes to my account. Like you know, you buy the meter and test it and uh, uh, put it into the circuit, something like that. So there can be uh, issues as well. Now I go back oh. to in fact MN in Saliki. the state of Karnataka, in the state of Karnataka, the transformer, the protective devices. the cabling from uh, this one across the street everything is done by a consumer and it is after one year it is handed over back to the scom the buying portion is from uh, the consumer handing over portion to scom after one year so uh, i think in some states are immediately as soon as you install it you you money is yours property is discoms no here they have gone one step higher that you have to make it for one year if it Comes out within one year. You have to provide it again and to give it back only after one year. That is to say, when it is safe and it it can be taken back to Eskom, they take it back. So that's okay. The thank you. Thanks for comment. adding the answer, sir. Thanks for adding the answer further. So okay. now we have only limited time. We have fifty minutes passed. Thank you. Now okay. uh, the next question is uh, to Sali Ji. Sali Ji, we know that the regulation uh, which we were discussing, regulation number sixteen, the Eskom is not following. uh the consumers sometime are not following the necessary safety measures and finally it is leading to 
15,000 average uh, electrocutions uh, across India per year. And you know the gravity of fire accidents, fire from short circuit or fire from electricity, which is uh, happening uh, all over India. Sometimes the discoms are not following, uh, not sometimes, discoms are most of the time not following the regulation. Also, the consumer premises are becoming uh, unsafe. So the question to you is, uh, we are finding violations almost every day and everywhere. How uh, a common man can make a complaint and where a common man should make a complaint in case of these violations and how a common, can, uh, a common man can enforce that these, these regulations are not violated? Uh, you will say on that, uh, Saliji. Okay. Uh, I will call, like to call your attention at section 151 of Electricity Act 2003, that is regarding cognizance of offence. It says no court shall take cognizance of an offence punishable under this act except upon a complaint in writing made by appropriate government or appropriate commission or any of their officers authorized by them or the chief electrical inspector or electrical inspector or licensee or generating companies. So common mass has no reach to the court to ask for injustice on this um, violation. Only he can approach to the nearest electrical inspector or to the CGRF consumer grievances forum and where he can make a complaint. So, so that is the limitation as per our, our law. Okay, thank I you. I would like to add uh, one point there. We had uh, one case in Karnataka where we uh, uh, implemented this section 151 and then uh, we uh, booked the case against the ESCOM, the cable, uh, this Hathway cable people and the city, uh, Bangalore City Corporation as well. And uh, very funnily, without our knowledge, the provision itself was removed from uh, Karnataka's uh, this one, uh, jurisdiction of electrical inspector. 151 was removed without our knowledge. So that is how it works. So that, that was the first case we booked on uh, both the corporation and the uh, Hathway network and uh, ESCOM, all three put together for the death of a small child. And they removed so that uh, clause itself. This means uh, the accident is, uh, uh, you know, no, the, the, no one is bothered about the accident. Of, uh, ESCOMs, yes, to a certain extent. Yeah. So the case is because of a rule, let us remove the rule. Accident Ooh, is uh, yes, immaterial. Yes. The no, life of people noticed. is not, I know, the, the, the life of people is uh, not important. Uh, not so, important. <laughs> so the, okay. I mean, what I was trying to tell is uh, the strong arm tactics to by the so called people, they remove the rule itself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so, the, one, just one point. Uh, read 136 because of that 136 only this happens because diluting the regulation or act by giving a provision to government state government i think such kind of uh, provisions shall not be applicable for uh, in places where safety matters am i correct <laughs> this is what you are saying so coming back to the to the question uh, uh, regarding regulation number 47 uh, the question is to oppose sir sir in chapter 6 uh, safety provisions for electrical installation and apparatus of voltage exceeding uh, 650 volt regulation number 47 which is talking about uh, the interlocks and protection of use of electricity at voltage exceeding 650 volt here the uh, the provisions for avoiding neutral circulating current has been made uh, this is also probably applicable, not also, this is also applicable for low voltage, but this is, uh, this regulation has come under uh, the uh, heading uh, above exceeding 650 volt. What is your say on this, your opinion on this? Uh, <coughs> yes, yes. Uh, actually the regulation title that is at voltage exceeding 650, it, it says interlock and protection, that's the title. But the voltage is exceeding 650. This gives a complete confusion to the uh, consumers as well as the inspectors. But they know that it is applicable for all. For example, you see the sub-regulation 1, 3. 
the chase when there is a interlock should be provided for uh, for uh, avoiding pack feeding and another thing uh, see regulation sub regulation 24 it insists earth fault relay for 100 kv dg set can we interpret these two things are applicable if the voltage is exceeding 650 exceeding 650 means 11 kv in our system at least minimum 11 kv no 650 existing now so we we should not interpret it as a voltage exceeding 650 because it is applicable for 100 kv there is no 100 kv dg set uh, at 11 kv you see and there is uh, interlock is necessary for avoiding uh, paralleling or for avoiding feedback so we should interpret it out of common sense and science and technically we should not strictly abide by the uh, regulation it is a, it has become a compulsion uh, and another thing these things are have arisen due to the removal of uh, uh, voltage classification hv lv mv which were clearly available in the erstwhile well electricity rules now that it has been received uh, removed and a complicated phraseology is employed above 650 about 250 not exceeding those these are all uh, quite unnecessary you simply uh, say that lv mv hv then the questioner is who has to do it whether ce or crc as per alter state 2003 it should be done by any of these two categories because people we are all uh, hardly wired our brains are hardly wired with hv lv mv so why do you remove those things and make these uh, phrases and make it uh, controversial to the science so the thing is we should not read the title as voltage exceeding 650 this occurs in several places because of this classification because interlock earthing most of the things are common to all voltages but by defining this 650 there should be some special category if it exceeds 11 kv or 33 kv it is an ehv insulation there are some uh, stringent measures that it cannot be a, for all the uh, all the protection measures like parallel operation or interlock or something that's what i feel uh, finally we should avoid the implementer should avoid the word at voltage exceeding 30 remove it for the sake of uh, or probably uh, if this regulation is made uh, in the chapter 3 or where the general safety measures where it is applicable for all the voltages it would have been much better that is what uh, is the conclusion am i yes. correct sir yeah so yeah, i think yes, it should there... be it should be subject not voltage wise it yes. that all makes Not the confusion it should be common for all saliji you have you told yes, uh, there was a similar mistake like this in respect of dry type transformer it had come under the uh, conditions applicable for uh, transformers having oil over 2000 liters so i pointed out that if you go along uh, according to this then most of distribution transformer will not be required as per this uh, dry type uh, regulation so that regulation they removed from which was under 2000 liters and that now the it's in put separately uh, so that the similar mistake is here with no, i just to point out the sample question hello also also sir uh, i just to quote a sample question several hmm. in the draft it was not 650 volt it was actually 1000 volt ac and 1500 volt dc which was actually in line with the uh, iec standards or the is standards 1000 volt yes. ac yes. then 1000 yes. volt ac 1500 volt dc is low voltage but the now uh, in the draft it was better but in the final one uh, again the 650 came into picture can anybody answer what is the basic behind this 650 volt and now imagine we have a solar rooftop pv system which is having uh, let's say 800 volt dc in which category it will come under <laughs> yeah and where is it written in the regulation can mm. anybody answer sir 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 actually this 650 volt was existing another uh, i can say almost 100 years back during the stoics there was no standard distribution voltage distribution uh, voltage various levels that is repeated and existing for the past 100 years i could i can say now we are in 2023 from 1937 we can reach 2037 also 
it's very sad is that yes uh, it's quite unfortunate that we still <laughs> follow 1937 uh, the old age 650 old and uh, but in the draft it was uh, much better 1000 volt but again 650 came into picture and we have to wait another 10 years to change or get a chance to change now coming back Let to the celebrate p- 100th year let celebrate 100th year for the change <laughs> okay so now coming back to the questions uh, i have a question as all question about the regulation number 77 which is nothing but the the lightning arrester let me scroll down to the regulation so lightning protection protection against lightning uh, my question is to james kutty sir so if we look at the first paragraph of the regulation it is good Uh, the the lightning arrester shall be this is applicable for more than 650 volt that means a hd surge arrester as per the relevant standard it has to be connected now in the para number 2 which is highlighted without touching any metal part to separate vertical earth electrode or junction of the earth matter uh, practically what happens is uh, i show you a, a, a picture from uh, a substation this is a substation and uh, these wells with the pipe you can see the uh, i mean this picture visible to you on the screen yes. Yes. yeah yes. These, these are like big cast and cast and earth electrode i think each of them are probably uh, maybe 7 8 meters and there is a water pipe as well to put the water every day you see here and now each of these earth pit are connected to the outgoing feeder 11 kv feeder of the substation and especially to the surge arrester so surge arrester is at the top of this particular uh, uh, this uh, the 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 line and a separate conductor insulated with insulation it is not touching anywhere separately it is running and connecting to this particular earth electrode the length of the earth lead in this particular case is approximately 5 to 6 meters and this is the practice uh, which is uh, followed almost all over india Uh, James Kutty, sir, what is your say on this? Will it work, sir? Uh, uh, here uh, you can see the change between the old and the new regulations is just the addition of the wording as uh, short as possible. You see in the second para as short as possible yeah. means the leads leads from the surge arresters should be as short as possible. to avoid the voltage drop or the induced voltage due to the added impedance through the extra length being a surge the effect of dl by dt will have influential role with the voltage but uh, uh, by this uh, actually the surge arrestor may not work for its rated surge voltage that's a problem then the added wading is very important means uh, the weighted add, weight added is very important but please go through the uh, other portions of this clause it is same just same as from the 2010 regulation as you know india in india we implemented the international lightning protection standard iec 62305 2010 from 2015 onwards it means after 2010 means the year of the old standard still we are keeping the same wordings with this regulation actually it is making more confused whether the lightning protection earthing and the power system earthing can be interlinked yes all of our standards such as nec 2023 is 782 is 3043 and ieee standards etc are supporting this to avoid the potential difference between the two portions and they and thereby to avoid the damages due to step potential etc now in this revised uh, ca safety regulations 2023 we are getting actually more confused regarding this regulation also uh, means uh, th- this regulation is also uh, making confusions at least the texts and the expression should be properly placed to understand the purpose begin instead of making more ambiguity Uh, before just copying the old regulation of course the electrical people beyond a profile can understand the purpose but even a common layman electrical layman should understand the regulation so it is better to uh, revise it accordingly thank you 
Yes, uh, I am just showing the picture uh, of what is written in the Indian standard. This is what is uh, from the Indian standard, especially this uh, lead length, which we call in a surge arrest is very important. So, the current regulation, uh, especially the paragraph number two is creating the confusion. Uh, people go for this kind of the connection L1, the first one. Here, it, the explanation is poor. So, connection L1 is poor. The connection L3 or this, the picture number three is the best one. That means the lead length of the surge arrestor has to be as short as possible. Now, if you look at the earlier picture, which I have shown here in this picture, the lead length is uh, quite large. So, technically speaking, uh, once when you have a longer lead length, the surge arrestor is, uh, uh, is of a showpiece. It looks, it is like a showpiece. It is never going to work because in the lead length, there will be more potential drop. As a result, the surge arrestor is not going to be effective, which is explained in the rules. Now, uh, the coming back to the regulation, I would say even if the paragraph number two and three is removed, the, the, the regulation would have been much better. What is your opinion on that, sir? If imagine a situation, the regulation, sub-regulation number two and the paragraph number three is just removed. Actually, you simply mention uh, it should be done as per the standard. That's enough. Yes, I think for, for from here onwards, wherever I am highlighting, half of the regulation one, then uh, sub regulation number two, and the, the paragraph number three. If all these are removed, uh, the, the situation yeah. would have been much better. Yes, yes, yes. Correct? Yes. Yeah, uh, but the problem is, in my view, why I took up this subject is. Uh, in BIS, we have the committee ETD 30. So I took up the subject uh, with the last committee meeting and then uh, we have made a subcommittee to make a study and I was visiting a lot of substations uh, to make uh, an analysis. Almost 99% of the installations, the lead length is much more and the surge arresters are of no use. Still surge arresters are failing, not due to lightning, but it is failing due to temporary overloads. And uh, we are in a situation that, uh, you know, nobody is bothered about uh, such situation. For example, in Maharashtra, there are transformer terminal mounted surge arresters as well. That means there are cases where uh, 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 this kind of connections are made. So the connection number three, there are cases in the 11 kV transformer, connection number three is also followed in Maharashtra, which is, I would say, very good. So now coming back to the questions, uh, my question is about regulation number 38, uh, which is uh, nothing but the regulation of uh, high-rise building. Uh, my question is to Saliji. Saliji, we were actively uh, participating in various uh, discussions. Now, this regulation, which is talking about the high-rise buildings, which is uh, provisions for now I think you can see in the in the in the, the one provision for supply and use of electricity in multi-storied building more than 15 meters in height. And now you see the sub-regulation number three. Actually, I tried reading it and uh, I am totally confused the, the meaning of it. Can you put some light on it? You have to unmute. You have to you have to unmute, Saliji. Uh, yeah, actually, the heading of regulation number 38, there should be a change. Uh, that should be multi story building and high risk buildings. That should have been the proper wording because under this, they mention that other buildings are also included. So, that is somewhat confusing, um, like airports and hospitals, where the height doesn't come into the picture every, every place. Uh, regarding that, uh, there are few additions in this regulation. I would like to mention that one point where they mentioned there should be a switch for the building which should come to completely isolate the supply of the building. That is interpreted wrongly because emergency services have always have to by bypass to this switch. If you see the uh, IEC uh, 60364 part 556, they have given a sample diagram of this state. They call it a fire switch. In according to that switch, uh, if you see, they have bypassed all emergency services uh, before uh, uh, before uh, placing this switch in the circuit. So 
it, uh, this uh, correction is very much needed because while the evacuation process is there, emergency services must run on and with the switch in off position that cannot be done. All emergency lighting, all your security services, door openings or, yeah, or um, smoke extraction systems, everything will fail. Uh, escape routes, lighting, etc. Et so I think there should be connection for these emergency services. Another thing is that uh, if you see uh, regarding the fire retardant low smoke cables, I think they have mentioned the uh, uh, FRLS cable uh, for the high risk buildings, but I think there should be at least FRLS cable shall be used. That wording should have been there because HFFR cables are also there and use of HFFR cable, they are specifically mentioned for certain type of buildings. So it shouldn't be like that. One more part which should which could have been added in this that AFDD they could have added in this because in National Electrical Code we already have uh, given suggestion to um, make a provision of uh, AFDD. So that is very much needed uh, in case of high-rise buildings. So few things I think still are required in this regulation which should actually uh, be necessary from the point of view of evacuation processes and all that. I would like to, so Gopa, yeah. Yeah, yes, so Gopa sir. I would like to supplement. Actually, the technicalities we do not uh, deal much because the NEC has been made mandatory. So the, this can be done. Actually, the, the actual problem is under sub revolution 3, all the 1 to 6 are deemed to be absorbed by the other buildings. We did not bother about representation one and two to apply for this. So we so AFDD or whatever you think you require, that can be implemented under the uh, NEC for various buildings like hospitals. Everything building classification is there. So the main concern is implementation, not the technical things to be inferred and applied. The implementation comes into picture for the building which height exceeds 15 meters. There ends the matter. When they insert the provision of other buildings under sub 3, it means that if they, if these buildings can observe the following sub-sub-regulations 1 to 6 and that would suffice. Electrical inspector need not inspect. That is one part of interpretation. Another part, whether these buildings are to be inspected uh, statutorily, that is absent totally. If, if these buildings, some clinics will be available in every street, some stadium, academic buildings, everything will be available. Who is going to inspect? What is the uh, mechanism available? What's the enforcing mechanism available in this country? So I presume that the sub revelation 3, other buildings are quite a complicated thing to be uh, to be exercised under any of the statutory provisions are available now. That is my inference. Yes, that means other premises such as airports, hospital, hotels, place of entertainment, uh, irrespective of height. Yes. Sir, can I add uh, some point? Yes, please, sir. Sir, actually, this high-rise building means it is entirely a different category. As per NBC, uh, these are the buildings having uh, height more than 15 meter in NBC. But uh, in the same NBC, it is said that the height of the high-rise building is depending upon the local fire laws. For example, in, the, in Bombay, it is 32 meter. In Kerala, it is 16 meter. This regulation 38 is entirely a different one, which is belonging to the multi-story buildings having height more than 15 meter. That is an entirely different category and not high-rise building. And as per regulation 38.1, the multi-story buildings having height more than 15 meter need electrical inspector sanction. But as per regulation uh, uh, 3, there are some other category of buildings which are not required uh, to get the permission from electric inspector. That is what I understand. But for example, place of worship, suppose it is a church having height 30 meter. That is not, uh, uh, that will not come under electric inspector category. That is what I understand. So, sir, according to you, all high-rise buildings, multi-storied buildings, more than 15 meters uh, need uh, inspection, except these airport, hospital, hotels and other these places. 
See, so this place, uh, doesn't uh, need as per regulation 38.3, the following protections or the uh, clauses should be applied for the buildings having height more than 15 meters plus the other buildings. As per regulation 38, the building having height more than 15 meters should get permission from electric inspector. Is it right? I, I think understand that way. Yeah, I think this regulation is from the perspective of uh, life safety of the persons uh, uh, in that building, whether it is a 15 meter height building or a hotel of less than 15 meter height building. So from that perspective, the height doesn't matter, only the evacuation and the life safety of the person during the emergency. So that is the important thing. So we should consider this regulation from that perspective. So instead of, I think, mentioning just high 15 meter high building, it should have been high risk building where the occupant load is more. I mean, the number of persons per square meter are beyond certain value. Then the, all those buildings should be considered for um, high risk as a high risk building. Okay, that means so, finally the question is whether these buildings, uh, irrespective of height, do they need inspection by the inspectorate or not? Yes, it should yes. need. It should. It should need inspection. It should. Need inspection no, is no. mandatory for there these is, buildings. There is no legal there if is no its height is more than fifteen meter, sir. We are so this confused. height, this height is from the point of evacuation because num as the, the increase number of stories, so evacuation process becomes very very difficult. See, there is no lift except fire lift. No, uh, sir, sir, that is correct. That is correct. You see, we know the subject and we can interpret it in yeah. one way. Whereas, uh, imagine a, a person who doesn't know much about uh, the evacuation or he is not thinking about uh, evacuation or other complications. How does a, a normal electrical engineer understand this regulation? The first question is, okay, more than 15 meters uh, multi-storied building, uh, in electrical inspectorates, uh, the inspection is required. Whereas for these buildings, such as airport, hospital and all, irrespective of height, whether it is uh, in a, a five meter height hospital, does it need uh, inspection or not? It should require. So that, is, that, that is the yes. question. I, I, in my view, I would say this is not very clear. Probably. Uh, no, no, can, sir, Mr. Gopa, I can say why they classify this building. The purpose of classification is describing the height limitation. Above 15 meters, direct, no problem. Below 15 meters. Only these buildings will come. If there are any buildings like stadium or test lab, no test lab with a multi story building and industrial installation, these are these are vague and uh, very many terms. Anything can be brought under these. Several lakhs of buildings can be brought under these terrain. Not only airport or stadium or public assembly, it involves some other installations also, explosive, flammable. It's a generic thing. But unfortunately, the legal teeth is totally missing. You can't insist, the electric inspector can't go and inspect. Because he has been already interested with the building of 15 meters, more than 15 meters height. How they can take these, under what category, do these require uh, specific permission? No. Anybody can put a question, any law people can put a question, it doesn't come under. But safety is a separate thing. When the regulation itself is not bothered about the safety, how can we jump into the field and enforce safety? That's a problem for the inspectors. They can't do this subclassification. Then surplus purpose of subclassification itself is to avoid inspection. That's my view. Actually, sir, in the draft, uh, in the draft, I still remember in the draft uh, it was written these buildings, irrespective of height. Yes, there was a wording, yeah. and here the, that wording, irrespective of height, is missing. That is the reason for all these uh, confusions. Yes, Probably yes. you just imagine, for yes. example, uh, railway or metro stations, irrespective of building and other public buildings, it would have been much better. So, draft was much better. Now, this particular change. So, we have a limited time. Let me go to the next question. The question is to James Kutti, sir. The question is about regulation number 39, especially a sub regulation number 3. You see this one, the, the basically uh, this uh, following this regulation, uh, uh, the, the distance, for example, what is your say on this? Actually, it especially is on the bare conductor on the back side of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is just a copy from the older regulation. I think it is okay that a 20 centimeter, I think somewhere it is there, 20 centimeter. If it is completely sealed 
and uh, uh, if the clearance is below 20 cm, I think no issue. Otherwise, it should be more than uh, 75 cm. I think it is okay uh, because for maintenance, uh, that panel should be uh, shifted from there for maintenance. Otherwise, uh, 75 cm is okay. I think it is okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, you carefully read the regulation that means 3B. There is a wording. If there are bare conductors, the question is bare conductors. In normal switchboards, <coughs> bare conductors requires attention, frequent uh, opening, their uh, rear opening, overall doors will be available. People have to go and do some termination or maintain something. <coughs> In that condition, how can you restrict the entry less than 25 centimeters? That is not correct. The wearing, bare connection should not come into this area. Actually, there is some change from the, it may be some typographical error or some uh, uh, unintentional insertion. This is wrong. If there are yes. any bare connection, people will have to move to the back side. And they have to have more than 75 centimeter. If you receive the entry less than 20, it will be inviting danger. So you have to go through the previous regulation. Basically, sir, the, the bare conductor, it has to be uh, removed, probably. I think can, you, the can you see? Can, it, there is a change. It appears there is a change from the previous uh, regulation. It is something uh, inserted, I think. Uh, unless I go through the previous regulation, I can't say that whether it is in insertion or not. Let me check up. If possible, you can also check, Mr. Gopa, from 2010, what's the relevant regulation? I think 37 is the relevant regulation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sir, okay, uh, one so, thing, uh, one yes, thing Gopa, I would like to add. See, in our uh, NEC part one, section 22, that speaks about electrical safety. We have given the R flash uh, distances, clearances restricted area, prohibited area, like that we have clarified what are the distances. And that is as per the R flash hazard as assessment. So this, whatever they have mentioned here, one meter or 20 centimeters, that, that doesn't correlate with the requirements we have given in the NEC uh, part one, section 22. So this, this uh, regulation should be reviewed from that point also. Yeah, yeah. So, so thanks for uh, all of you to answer these questions. Now, probably we can take up some of the questions uh, from the, uh, uh, the the question answers. But before that, I would like to add one small point. If we look at IA 732, Annexure A, which is talking about the... Uh, let me open that one moment, please. Anakshar A, provision for basic protection, various enclosure, or it is talking about uh, the uh, arms uh, reach. So basically, this has come, I think, from the arms reach point of view for as a measure against basic protection, but the wording is not uh, correct. The bare conductor, this would have been much, uh, this would have been improved. Anyway, probably we can also talk about it uh, later. So I'm just uh, starting with some of the questions. We have a lot of questions in our Q&A and, &A and uh, uh, the members, those who wanted to ask question, you please put the questions in the Q&A. We will not be able to take up all the questions. So it start with uh, uh, Mr. Elaling. Uh, I wanted to see clarification regarding guidelines outlined in NEC 2023 and NBC 2016. Especially, I would like to understand the implications of uh, adhering only to the must guidelines while disregarding the recommended guideline can be can a building or installation be considered compliant with the code of practice if it only follows the mandatory guidelines and ignore the recommended ones so who can take up this answer probably saliji the question is uh, the the uh, nec and nbc is made mandatory and there are something for which is also recommended. So, if the recommended is uh, uh, not followed, will it be okay? Is the question. You have to unmute yourself. If we go as per the word, the recommended thing we cannot make, uh, cannot say it's mandatory. So, that is just the recommendation. But if the electrical inspector gives an order 
that this seems, uh, thing should be as per this, then that becomes a mandatory. So uh, that is actually discretion of electrical inspector. If you see section 146, any order given by electrical inspector not followed, then that becomes punishable. So electrical inspector can order that recommendation uh, that he can convert it as an order and convert it into as a mandatory part. Okay, thank you. Thank and you. And another some... thing, another thing uh, which I have seen in the, um, I mean, local bodies who give the permission of the building for occupancy, they just mention that uh, provisions uh, should be as per national electric, uh, national building code. But if you see their formats of giving occupancy certificates and checklist, I think electrical part is almost negligible in any of their uh, format. So there are a few uh, points regarding the transformer substation, but regarding internal wiring electrical installation, no points are included. So NBC is not, so far was not mandatory. Now it is a good thing that they, it has been brought into this um, uh, regulatory part of electrical regulations also. Yeah, actually, this is a big uh, relief for me because, you know, the non-standard lightning protection, NBC has uh, uh, asked not to use uh, ESE lightning rods. And now, since NBC is made uh, mandatory, uh, now early streamer emission devices uh, legally is not valid in India, which is a good move, let me say. Now, there are some questions regarding uh, some technical uh, questions which are not related to the regulation, so I don't. I skip these questions. And there is a question from Mr. Arvind Deshmukh. Regulation 80 shall be discussed for PTCC approval from 11 kV. So let me show the regulation uh, 80. Uh, I think this uh, power the technical committee. Telecom and uh, yeah, oh. telecom and this uh, committee. Let me uh, show you the regulation number. 80. Yes. So, regulation number 80 is protection against electromagnetic interference. The owner or the of, of every electric supply line of voltage 11 kV and above shall obtain clearance of power telecommunication coordination committee to ensure the safety of personal and telecommunication line as per the requirement of section 160 of the act. Can anybody answer on this? See, this is requirement as per Telegraph Act. Uh, that section is from that only, I think. But uh, such uh, such clearances are never taken. I haven't seen such clearances are taken. So I have attended few of the meetings of this PTCC, but most of the things just remain on paper. So that's not being followed. Okay, but the, here it is talking about protection against electromagnetic interference, EMI. It is not talking about yes, personal yes. safety. It's only talking about EMI. Yes. yes. So, I what, think uh, there is, there is so another that is, regulation is also there. Means, uh, suppose there is an electric line and telecommunication line. Uh, the second coming line, authority should get the permission from the first authority. Yes, the new line coming in vicinity of telecommunication yeah. line, so clearance has to be taken. But see, there are no overhead lines nowadays, so that question doesn't arise. There, most of the lines are underground now. And in respect of underground lines, in our regulation, I think number 70 or something, they have given the what should be the clearance between uh, telecom cable and the power cable. Yeah. So I think Actually, it is the question is, is uh, yeah. the question is uh, regulation 80. Uh, is it applicable from 11 kV onwards? Yes, I, the answer is very clear because the regulation says 11 kV and above. So this clearance is required for 11 kV and above. Yes, right. So 11 kV is included. Yes. So that, yes. that is right. So for Actually, 33 kV, uh, 33 kV t, the distance is now is 30 centimeters and uh, above 66 kV or so, uh, the distance is uh, 60 centimeters. That is in mentioned in regulation. Yeah. Uh, sir, I would like to supplement. I attended several telecom PTCC coordination meetings some years back, 10 years back. Now these things are not coming. I don't know because of uh, uh, absence of uh, almost uh, over a telecommunication line. There are there is a stringent measure that whenever a parallel feeder 
say Wonten KV power line feed at pits or uh, something happens, there will be induction in the telecommunication lines. That's the purpose. That is electromagnetic interference, not interference. Any people who work in a dead line parallel to any EHV communication, EHV line can suffer damage due to induction from that line. That's why parallelism should be avoided in general. The, 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 the regulation should be observed, whether the lines are existing or not. If anything comes into picture, then it should be observed. How can we totally avoid that uh, particular regulation? Act, which is actually arising from the act itself. The regulation should be observed, it is my opinion. Yeah, yeah, thank there you. There can be some work in future or something existing. We yeah, can't sir, there, is a, there is an interesting question, which is uh, straight uh, directly related from Mr. Prince Singh. Is this regulation applicable to older buildings and factories? Or is it applicable for new installations only? Is it uh, retrospective? Uh, sir, uh, Shishiraj, sir, what is your opinion on this? Yeah, it will be retrospective only. Not the existing ones. Okay, so that means whatever going to come in the future, uh, this is uh, applicable. So not for the old buildings. Not for the old ones. Okay, thank you. So somebody again asked the regulation AT shall be discussed. Uh, yes, we already discussed it. Uh, uh, a lot of questions still about the earthing. Somebody asking, uh, you know, earth bit insulated. Uh, so these questions, we are uh, sorry that we cannot take up the question. Today's discussion is more about the uh, regulations. So again, one question, in case of neutral earthing of genset and transformer, what shall be the minimum two earth electrode is insulated? Okay, these are technical questions, not related. Uh, gentlemen, Mr. Bera, uh, uh, please note that the regulation is talking the generator and transformer terminals as well as body to be connected to a common bus bar to separate connections. That is the requirement. So, but whereas your question you were asking about earth electrodes and all, which is not applicable. Uh, then... Uh, Actually, there are several questions, but uh, there is no question uh, really related to the regulation. Somebody is asking a requirement to prevent the fire for solar installations. Have anybody saw a requirement included in the regulation about the fire in solar PV? I think there is a separate regulation, chapter 10 in regulation yep. talks about solar. And uh, in uh, connection with that, you refer NEC Part A, which talks about uh, rapid shutdown and uh, fire protection. Yeah, actually, Chapter 10 talks about uh, the safety requirements for uh, renewable energy stations. Uh, from Regulation uh, uh, 119 onwards, uh, so it talks about renewable energy stations, then safety for solar PV. Uh, this is regulation number 121. So it talks uh, generally, there is nothing about fire in this particular case specifically. You have to refer the, uh, yes, there is the relevant the standards. To, yeah, it is, it is there, I think, uh, on page number 144, uh, 121.4. 124, 121.4, I think. There and is, the, uh, uh, yeah, yes, there is a sub-regulation. Uh, yes, the yes. 121 sub-regulation number 4, it says four. a requirement to prevent fire from solar insulation. A fire detection system and automatic fire suppression system shall comply with the relevant standards. Okay, the fire detection and suppression systems are specified. But uh, you see, if we look at the NEC, the requirement at the DC side, uh, the DC arcing is highly dangerous and it can uh, create uh, you know continuous fire which will spoil the whole installation, the whole building in, if it is a rooftop. For uh, avoiding DC arcing, especially on the solar PV, uh, double insulation is made mandatory or you cannot compromise double insulation. But most of our uh, solar PV installations, especially inside the combiner box, double insulation measures are compromised. That is the reason. Most of the fire in uh, solar PV are in the combiner box because double insulation is missing. Also, sometimes people use uh, 
normal wires with single insulation for this application these are actually violations so the first is you should comply to the standards as well not only providing the fire detection and suppression system so i am actually reading uh, questions uh, one by one but a lot of questions reg again regarding air thing i don't know when our nation is going to be free from these air thing questions and free from this chemical air <coughs> so uh, probably i request the panelists to you also please uh, go through the questions there are so many questions and uh, uh, Okay, somebody is asking uh, regarding lightning arrester. Can you explain once again, please, Mr. Gopinath? Mr. Gopinath, uh, if you use any surge arrester, let it be low voltage or high voltage, the length of the connecting wire has to be as short as possible because the idea of the surge arrester is to limit the transient over voltage which is going into your equipment. Let's say, for example, a transformer. if the length of the lead the connecting lead is more there is voltage drop on the lead length which will induce more voltage the impulse or the clamping voltage will be higher so in order to have the best effect of lightning arrester you have to use the shortest wire length for a 11 kv or 9 kv surge arrester probably 1 or 2 meters is okay but if you connect the surge arrester earth lead imagine the length is 5 meters approximately 50 kv will be dropped on the wire length itself the protection level of the surge arrester plus the wire length will be much more than the impulse withstand voltage of this transformer so surge arrester becomes ineffective that is what it is so again mr dilip uh, has asked the question as per new regulation now the hospitals which are not of height more than 15 meters need to take approval from uh, electrical inspector by submitting the drawings i think it is not a question it's a statement from mr dilip uh, according to mr dilip uh, uh, hospitals uh, even if the height is not uh, 15 meters they need uh, uh, an approval from the electrical inspector that uh, that sub regulation uh, probably is with regard to congregation of people as the sub regulation if you see all the installations covered in that is uh, with relation to congregation of people like stadium hospital uh, uh, airport or uh, railway and such installation so there's specific uh, i think the earlier uh, act also had uh, specific uh, requirement under section 54 where there are congregation of people that uh, you have to have uh, electrical inspectors uh, approval so the same is replicated here um, i feel yes sir this uh, there is another question uh, the safety regulation is silent on the following points whether whether the oil transformer has an oil capacity below 2000 liters can be provided in the second basement of the building residential yes. or commercial industrial or on the roof of the building no it is covered actually no actually we can refer the uh, uh, technical standards for uh, plants and um, uh, there is given regulation i think 2020 when the regulations come out so oil type transformer is not allowed anywhere other than ground and first basement dry type transformers of course there is yeah, no such yeah. so I, i i will uh, yeah so i will uh, there are few people those who have raised the hand i am allowing some of the uh, uh, the the participants uh, if you wanted to speak please unmute yourself and you can have uh, your questions directly actually i allowed a few people but uh, i can't find their names anymore mr neelesh mr naresh you can talk also mr mohan kulkarni mr suresh kannan mr jay jodi dar your hand is raised so we presume that you wanted to talk mr govinathan 
Mr. Pera, if you wanted to talk, please. Uh... Hello? Sir. Uh... Yeah, I'm Gopinath. Yes, Mr. Gopinath, please. Yeah, my wife. I hope my voice is audible. Uh, regarding yeah, yeah. that, earlier we have discussed, sir. Can you share the picture once again, sir? What you shared that uh, earlier picture? The surgery, sir. Yes. Ah, okay. I will. I will put it in the chat box. Okay. Very soon. Quickly, I will put it in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. So, sir. Uh, yes, this Mr. Dara. This is Joy Thar from uh, Haldia Petrochemicals. I have a question is. See, uh, this, uh, we have the engineers and diploma engineers. Now, uh, as per regulations, do they require to have separate license again from licensing board, electrical license? Yeah, it is required. For all engineers and uh, diploma engineers? I yeah. think you have to designate them for the purpose of, uh, for the duties which you are assigning to them. So, designation should be given. Again, so they are, they are the, uh, the regulation requires that when in they are uh, I mean appointed by consumers, it is a requirement by the state act uh, on licensing that they have to have the licenses or permits issued by the state. It is applicable in Karnataka. Yes, they have to immaterial of their qualification. They have to have the permits and licenses. So basically, they have to get the license from Karnataka if if yes. this is the, the the facility in Karnataka. What about Maharashtra, Saliji? I think if the person is designated for the particular task of work and if his name is given in that list, which has, he has to keep the record and electrical inspector can go and check and even reject his name if he's not capable of doing that duty. So that, that supervisor license or such things are not required. Okay, that means only a person who is having the supervisory license can be listed in this particular uh, task. No, not necessarily. He should he, he need not have any supervisory license. Only the company should designate him for the particular task of work. No, so this is basically dependent on the state. Well, sir, Actually, the yeah. interpretation interpretation may differ. Mr. Apau may put some light on this. I think Mr. Pau is no more. Uh, in, sir, uh, are we talking yeah. about uh, regulation three? <laughs> yes. I, 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 sir, Apau, sir, yes, can you hear? Uh, this is. Uh, yes, 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 sir, yes, sir. Hello. Uh, uh, Am I audible? Actually, regulation. Uh, sorry, regulation. I'm. Uh, I'm audible, sir. Yeah, yeah, you're audible, please. I'm audible. Yes. Uh, the, the question raised was whether the designated, the listed person, uh, yeah, are the diploma or daily orders can be listed to undertake the safety clearance, safety work within the premises. It's a must. As per Regulation 3, uh, only the persons are notified by the state licensing board. That is, the government, government has sent up the state licensing board to uh, do the work by the uh, competent certificate holders. Irrespective of uh, the, the qualification, they have to, whether they are diploma or degree, they have to be conversant with the nature of work, with the safety work. They, they, can, they can be extended somewhere else, not in the safety protocols, safety Yes, safety so field. Really so that's why yes, that particular uh, thing is uh, with regard to the designated person, designated person, there is no. Yeah, sir, your voice is too We got person. the message. The message is. Uh, 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 I mean, maybe. Uh, sir, uh, uh, as per regulation 3 3, it is a must to have sir, the permit from the appropriate government. This clearly yes, means uh, he has to pass the, the the appropriate certificate from the licensing board of the respective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Board. It is mentioned mentioned in Regulation 3.3, no doubt. Okay, Mr. Mr. Dar, I hope uh, you are. But uh, there will answer. be an exemption uh, for engineers and diploma by the respective state, depending on the whichever state. There are exemptions, so a engineer directly gets his permit. So that itself is enough. He need not appear for an exam in Karnataka. But another, other than an engineer or a diploma, they, he has to appear. 
so that means it is it is even some of the states there are some changes uh, from the regulation now actually we have mr bera subra uh, subrat kumar bera you please ask your question sir yes sir i am basically from the uh, i am retired from indian oil corporation and uh, i am uh, having the oil and gas uh, sector uh, that is uh, my major question is the uh, related to the ardi arthing is the lifeline for the bottling plant lpg bottling plant and the storage units and uh, only thing i want to know that uh, uh, what would be the minimum distance between the two electrodes but some uh, at some places it is 1 meter and some places uh, uh, no, the question is, is uh, understood may i answer the question is understood yeah. may i answer now for your petroleum Hello. installation Uh, are you yeah. following the OISD standard, Oil Industry Safety Directorate standards? Not able to hear. Are you Hello. following? Are you following OISD standards? Yes, yes, we are following the absolutely following the OISD standards as well as. No, no. Let me answer, sir. Let Let me answer. Your question is very well understood. Yeah. The O in most of the oil industry. Uh, Uh, installation the oisd standards are used and your question is regarding the air thing i am so sorry to make a comment here whatever written in some of the oisd standards are really big foolishness sorry to use the word foolishness in the sense if you wanted to see i can show you the uh, the regulations as well they not the regulation the the oisd standards it says electronic equipment need a separate earthing of 1 ohm lightning protection separate earthing of 7 ohm transformer neutral need a separate earthing of 2 ohm i don't know from where such foolish ideas came into a very very important uh, uh, rule which is followed in all over india in the oil and gas sector we have written so many letters to this authority telling them that this is wrong and in the specification of oisd oisd standard they have also written that all these are as per is 3043 it is absolutely wrong is 3043 never written to make separate 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 now your oisd standard has written it and all over india your petroleum installations your gas storage installations are following this in this this uh, 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 unsafe for procedure, and this is the reason for failure. I am so sorry to make this comment, sir. Hope the answer is clear. What you are following is absolutely wrong. It is technically wrong. Let me ask. Let me, or let us go to the next uh, questions, uh, Mr. Mo- Mohan Kulkarni. If you wanted to speak, uh, you can uh, uh, do it. so i don't know my harsh sir. answer uh, would have been uh, you know it was too harsh uh, probably hemant sali ji you are looking serious <laughs> any <laughs> comment on it you are also a member of is 3 etd no. 20 is 3043 sir sir may i yes please uh sir regarding that uh, specifically diploma holders that uh, uh, shashi raj ji has uh, told only electrical diploma holders are allowed or any diploma holder who have taken npti or uh, pet certification who is allowed to work as authorized it is only, only electrical. electrical and electronics uh, in diploma holders only in the state of karnataka earlier we had uh, even the mechanical ones which was removed uh, in between uh, 2013 and uh, 2018 and now electronics has been added so it is only electrical and electronics and nobody else okay thank you thank you sir oh so, dr bhavani uh, yes sir unmute yourself yes sir yes sir hello sir uh, i am in wind industry and uh, here uh, uh, if we see the for the this wind farm generation is 690 volt and for that a simple usa unitized substation is there uh, what happens uh, around 15 wtg are connected a single line okay sir so la uh, normally as per cig regulation la is installed on the dp means the top of the dp structure but uh, when any la fails then whole 15 wtg trip total feeder trip so to avoid this one la is put below the isolator means after isolator for the individual wtg means ultimately 
this this alloy is for uh, transformer protection basically 2.3 mba or uh, 3 mba transformer is there so here uh, this is made for the operation point of view for operation point of view, we can once an lf uh, trip um, lf blast in any wtc that is isolated through the isolator but another wtc can be run means uh, uh, say 14 wtc can run to avoid the generation loss so this is uh, right or wrong as per uh, protection of the system lightning protection I think they, I think I think it is acceptable. It is acceptable. So there is there is no issue. No, I think the the issue is whenever there is a surge arrestor failure, the surge arrestor failure is creating uh, due to the surge arrestor failure, the feeder is tripping. That is the issue. Am I uh, correct? Is it? Uh, feeder uh, is tripping. Uh, yes, feeder is tripping, and all fifteen WDG say thirty megawatt is uh, black uh, out. So to avoid that. Means uh, early restoration. When, uh, if, uh, for example, if uh, one WTG, uh, one USS is identified for LA uh, failure, so replacement will take time. So simply uh, isolate the uh, isolate that particular location, or another can be put in generation. That is a lot. Sir, the, 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 the easy way is, uh, sir, the easy way is, you please go to IS one five zero eight six, IS one five zero eight six part five. This is a standard which is uh, which is made during 2020. It is from IEC 60099 Part 5. This is talking about selection and application recommendations of surge arrestor. Uh, the necessary protective measures of avoiding the the, the tripping of the, the feeder is included there. Please refer the standard. That is the easy way. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Gopa, sir, you rightly told the standards C099, IEC standard C099 part 5. In most of the locations, what we practically find is the wrong selection of lightning arrestors. In regulation itself also, it is told that you provide a, a 9 kV lightning arrest. It's not correct. Sometimes it all depends on various factors, the effectiveness of earthing, whether it is solid neutral or uh, NGR earthing. So many things come into picture. The temporary over voltage if ultimately decides the selection of lightning arrestor. At times, you will have to employ a lightning arrestor more than your system voltage, not 9 kV. It, you may require a 12 kV lightning arrestor also for a 11 kV distribution. So this is the thing. Unless you analyze those selection procedures, you can't have a light, right matching. The Another thing, the, the, the actual erection, the erection as Mr. Gopa as well as Mr. Uh, James Putty told the, the lead length and the closeness so that the purpose of lightning arrestor is to safeguard the equipment which is designed for a certain BIL. And if you were residual voltage and if for lightning arrestor suffer a residual voltage more than its rating, say for example, a 75 kV BIL transformer can't withstand a voltage <laughs> of above 100. Similarly, your lightning arrest also will have to drain the HSU lightning surge, divert the surge. It's only a surge diversion. You should provide a supply continuity as well as the uh, protection now for transformer. There should be a right balance by right selection according to IEC 6099 part 5. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks for the detailed answer. Uh, uh, yeah, sir, sir Joyadhar, I have another question. For this lightning arresters, uh, suppose in a, a structure, we have six lightning arresters. Now, this is lightning arresters are going to the six earth pit, lightning earth pit. And all these earth pits are, are uh, connected together through an earth grid. Now, there is separate earthing grid also for the electrical earthing. Now, can the electrical earthing and this lightning earthing grid uh, be connected together? Means uh, on the same uh, earth, uh, earth grid, that means I connect my lightning earth pit as well as the electrical earth pit, or I have to prepare two separate earth grids and then bond them together. Sir, sir to make it simple, please you can't separate any earth grid. Please have a look at the separate uh, the screen. This is from the IS standard. In fact, in the heading you are seeing IEC, but this is the IS standard which I have just referred. There are three ways of connecting 
connection 1 2 and 3 connection 1 is a poor connection because you see the length l3 between the zinc oxide uh, let me zoom it again between the lightning lmo zinc oxide that is the surge arrester and t is the transformer there is a large loop standing with l2 l3 l5 l4 there is a large loop due to this wire length or due to the uh, the length of this uh, the, the loop your surge arrester is not efficient in this case that means if you are connecting your surge arrester through a separate insulated uh, conductor or a bare conductor insulated from the uh, from the, uh, the the metallic parts of your installation and if you are connecting it to a separate earth electrode technically your surge arrester or the lightning arrester whatever the name we call it will not protect your transformer now the connection number one for a extra high voltage let's say 66 kv 132 kv 220 kv it may work because the length lead length is only five meters six meters but this and the withstanding voltage of the transformer of that voltage is very high whereas for 11 kv or 22 kv transformer the impulse withstanding voltages are quite less it's not in hundreds of kvs it is much less let's say 11 kv transformer it's about 75 kv so 5 meter wire length itself is a problem now in that particular case you go for the connection number 2 or 3 the surge arrester lead earth wire has to be connected to the transformer tank itself in this case connection number two or three, you get the best possible protection from or by using the surge arrester. Connection number one is okay for extra high voltage, but not for 11 kV or 22 kV or 33 kV distribution class. So I hope the answer is, uh, or we hope the answer is clear. Please uh, refer the standard. Very clear explanations are given. Thank you, sir. So, any other questions? Uh, we have made some more people. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, myself, Smuti from Odisha. Yes, please. No. Sir, actually, for the charter safety engineers, they are not allowing the BISCOM engineers. Sir, can we be allowed or not for charter safety engineers? Uh, I don't know who can answer this question. Saliji, you are on it mute. Is, it is already defined by Central City Authority. They, uh, they have uh, prepared on guideline. As per the guideline, I think discount engineers are not uh, not adequate. Sir, Sali, sir, you please. Sir, you have to unmute. Yeah, I think I think the state can allow uh, the uh, discount engineers. Uh, to, to act as a charter electric safety engineer, that is within the scope of state. So, state to state, the rules may differ. Uh, in yeah. our state, I think five years. I uh, think minimum five years is uh, required. Then, then only they are supposed to come into any electrical field. Yeah, uh, but Open. regarding this supply engineers, what will happen? In uh, checking their own installation and certifying that will not be correct. I think it should be cross certified. The person who carries out the work should not certify himself as a chartered engineer. Somebody else should certify it. That's precisely why electrical inspector came into the picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, we have to reduce the inspector Rajna. The, everything I is know. that That's, end. That, yes. yes. Sir, so is it a, sir, is it a disc, uh, uh, retired, retired engineers or uh, in service engineers? Retired. Right. Okay. Uh, I think Mr. Smudi. In cannot uh, come at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Mr. Pradhan's question is whether a working engineer from the uh, from the DISCOM can he be uh, a, no. a chartered safety engineer uh, oh, no. additionally? The, the their uh, this one rules does not uh, provide for them to work anywhere else. Or guidelines. Not, uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Guidelines do not allow the person to work somewhere anywhere else, uh, engage in any government or semi-government um, exactly. as employees. So that is the, the reason. Standing group. Yes, yes. Okay. So I think uh, yes, we have passed almost two hours. 
and it went so fast. <laughs> so I, actually, before making a, a word of thanks, I would like to say sorry to all of you. I was a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, regarding the question from the uh, oil industry. Uh, actually, my problem is uh, in the oil industry that uh, standard it is written. Uh, the mistakes are written and uh, at the bottom it is written as uh, all these mistakes are made as per IS 3043. As a committee member of uh, ETD 20 and responsible for making IS 3043, I would say if OISD standard removes as per IS 3043, I have no problem. So it is up to them whether to change or improve their standard. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, us or with uh, the committee members of ETD 20. But if you make a wrong uh, uh, you know, a, re a requirement in your standard and uh, ask it as per IS 3043, then uh, it is, uh, it is uh, you know, our quality of work itself is uh, getting affected. That is why I was a little bit angry. I'm so sorry for that. So thanks uh, to uh, all the participants uh, as well as the panelists. Uh, Shashiraj, sir, thank you very much for participating and patiently answering the questions. Uh, Heman Saliji, uh, also, James Kutiji, Amritilal, uh, also uh, Apausar. Apausar is uh, traveling and he is in his native. I think he joined through his phone. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks to all of you for uh, patiently answering the question. Probably we can also have one more session uh, in the same subject, uh, maybe after uh, uh, two or three weeks. So, if all of you agree and if we can uh, make a common date, we can have one more session. So, with this, uh, uh, probably we can end up the session. Uh, if you have any points, the panelists are invited to make comments uh, uh, for for if you have any comments. Shashirat sir, any Shashirat sir, any comments? Uh, well, right now I don't think so because uh, as I told you, it is uh, I mean the way uh, guidelines have come very recently, and we need to. Uh, interact with uh, each provision and see how it fits into the present circumstances. Uh, so I think it will take little time for us to again uh, look into the practical aspect of uh, application of these uh, uh, regulations and then we can probably come out with a better view on this. So Saliji. Yeah. I think I think we should appreciate the efforts taken by CA. Really, there are some good changes which we have been expecting, but still we have to travel a bit more. And for that, I think the regular revision revision session should be uh, taken. And you, as per these reviews, some amendments if required that should be considered. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. James, could you say, sir, uh, regarding that oil and explosive regulations. Peso is having main role. So you, Gavumar, you please have contact with the Peso engineers. They need adequate training in lightning protection and electrical safety. It is a must. Sir, actually, uh, regarding this one, that uh, OISD, I have I am following up with them for almost now five, six years. I have written several letters. Nobody is bothered. Then uh, recently, about three months back, uh, I sent uh, an email which was a little bit harsh. So then after uh, making a harsh uh, comment on the email, then suddenly everybody woke up and they started replying saying we are going to uh, the, this particular requirement. Uh, anyway, if they are changing or not changing is none of my business. If they remove as per IS3043, my job is done. Because they make a mistake and how do how can they make uh, put their mistake into our shoulder? I hope you understood. <laughs> so... Anyway, we will we will put our effort and we will see that uh, we will be uh, changing it. Uh, finally, to oppose sir, any comments, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, uh, see, we have dealt with a lot of the enforcement uh, provisions implementation. This is not sufficient. Actually, see, uh, regulations have come out with uh, a more uh, pessimistic, uh, optimistic uh, way. We have to improve because improvement is a never-ending process. We are having still after so many. Uh, programs conducted by our group, that is NFA, we have been facing such basic questions from the same members who attended the meeting. So, in my opinion, improvement is a never-ending process. It should be done. But, unfortunately, we are 
going it in a very low pace let us uh, all rise to the occasion and make ourselves competent confident to provide the safety measures to the people at large thank you that's all what my message to the people thank you for the opportunity also uh, mr amritlal you were uh, raising the hand any question yeah. no no just uh, one point uh, see we uh, we are on the world stage like india is on the world stage and uh, when we put up some regulations we, the wordings are, are also very important uh, i find lot of places where gender neutrality is not observed okay so that is a very small point but uh, very i think very important yeah uh i'm showing the screen of uh, the uh, cea you can download the regulation from this uh, particular website which is uh, cea also i would like to show the our organization nfe national federation of engineers for electrical safety we are uh, a, a new born society not for profit organization uh, the members are uh, uh, there are about 500 members uh, in last 3 months we started our activity in uh, Uh, 10th of march uh, 2023 the mission uh, is to make uh, every electrical installation free from uh, accidents so we are taking lot of efforts uh, to make awareness we request uh, the participants if you are interested please uh, join our association and uh, put your uh, uh, your efforts so that we can make uh, 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 a nation free of electrical accidents there are different kind of membership facilities available uh, individual member the annual fee is about 1000 rupees and registration fee is 500 rupees uh, so uh, we are making lot of classes and you can participate in all our classes at free of cost uh, not all the uh, training courses there are some training courses which is uh, where we have to pay uh, for the venue as well as for the trainer except those cases it's uh, uh, free so with this uh, uh, we would like to stop with the program uh, i hope there is no question we will come back to you by uh, within next two uh, the same question or the new questions can be taken up and if you have any further questions you please mail us you can go to the uh, nfe website you can mail us so that your questions can be addressed uh, in the next session So thank you very much and thanks to all the participants as well as the panel members to patiently sit with us for more than 2 hours and uh, actively participating in this discussion we have lot of uh, participants raised their hands as well as there are several questions we are so sorry that uh, due to the time limitation we are unable to answer all your questions but we will definitely take it up uh, further and we will answer your questions sir. so thanks to all of you thank you very much